Somewhere in the dark and nasty regions where nobody goes stands an ancient castle. Deep within this dark and uninviting place lives Burke, overworked servant of the thing upstairs. But there's nothing to compare with the horrors that lurk beneath the trap door. For there is always something down there, in the dark, waiting to come out. The Vile Pile As usual, Burke's cellar was in a mess. Bits of muck and rubbish everywhere. But this was nothing new to Burke. And he was merely going about the task of cleaning up. Burke hummed a jolly little tune as he tipped all the gloopy, runny rubbish down the trap door. Down you go, vile stuff, said Burke, thinking that this was the quickest way of clearing up all the mess. Boney watched Burke tip a particularly revolting lump of glodge down the trap door. It landed with a distant, echoey splat. Boney decided but it was time to give Burke some advice. Burke, I keep telling you, you shouldn't tip all the rubbish down there. Burke, as usual, paid no attention to Boney. You're a worrier, Boney, and a nagger, too. Nag, 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 nag. Burke casually emptied another pot full of vile, mucky scunge down the trap door. I don't nag, do I? Boney whinged, a little offended that Burke was accusing him of being a nagger. I don't nag that much, do I, Burke? But Burke just wandered off towards the kitchen, taunting Boney. Yeah, nag, 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 poor old Boney. He thought that Burke should pay more attention to his advice, and went on muttering to himself, Anyway, I don't think he should tip it all down there. Something is sure to... Boney's moanings were cut short by a distinctly vile smell oozing out of the trap door. Burke! Boney was a little worried. A pair of wobbling eyes followed the smell from the trap door, sending the bugs and worms scuttling off to hide. The eyes looked around. Slowly a mass of writhing, bubbling, oozing rubbish squirmed its way out of the trap door. It slid past the worried Boney, depositing a lump of nasty glodge on the top of his head. Boney did not find this at all amusing, but his protests were stifled by the dripping glodge. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Burke was mixing up ingredients for a really disgusting snack for him upstairs. Ha! Oh, Boney, don't half go on sometimes, he said to himself as he worked. Splat, splat, splat. The ingredients were gradually mixed together. Burke plucked a tasty-looking eyeball from the table and added it to the slodge in the mixing bowl. Split. He didn't notice the strange, vile pile eyes peering over the top of his table. Silly old bone bounce, he mused. He selected the final bits and pieces for his mixture. Few worms, I think, for that extra flavour. Very appetising. The vile pile extended its sniffing tube to investigate the wiggly things on Burke's table. In you go, me little beauty. Still talking to himself, Unaware of the vile pile and its sniffing tube, Burke was intent upon the delightful meal that he was creating. Caw! Sniff that! Without realising it, Burke grabbed the vile pile's sniffing tube, eager to stuff everything possible into his creation. Something moved in Burke's hand. Oh! Watch this, then! he exclaimed, suddenly aware that there was something not entirely ingredient-like about the twitching brown tube that he was holding. But before Burke could say, Oh, Glorbits! A mucky mass of yellow yuck squirted from the tube right into Burke's face. Oh, charming, said Burke. He did not take kindly to his ingredients spitting at him. Before the vile pile had a chance to spit again, Burke grabbed his rolling pin and bonked the ill-mannered ingredient with all the strength he could muster. Bonk, bonk, splat, whack, bonk! Bits of rubbish and glodge were sent splattering all over the place. But the rubbish just wriggled and squirmed back together again. The brown tube re-emerged from the middle of the seething mass and vibrated, vibrating menacingly at Burke, who was now more than a little worried. Burke was hit by an even bigger, sticky yellow mass of muck. Oh, this thing don't seem too friendly, said Burke as he wiped the muck from his mouth. Perhaps 
Burke should have listened to Boney. The vile pile, satisfied that it had dealt with Burke, slowly slithered and slid slimily away, spitting another mass of yellow stuff at Boney just for good measure. Poor old Boney. He didn't like having dribbly stuff squirted at him. Back in the kitchen, Burke had an idea. Oh, he gotta put a stop to this. After all, he couldn't have a nasty, smelly, vile pile of rubbish sliming around in his kitchen, spitting all over him and his friends. It's not hygienic. Burke grabbed a cooking utensil, and as the vile pile was about to spit again, Oh, no, you don't, he shouted, and he stuffed his implement right into the thing's spitting tube, blocking it up like a cork in a bottle. The vile pile was now completely unable to spit. It strained and strained trying to unblock its tube, but it was no use. It just swelled up bigger and bigger as the pressure from its straining efforts to spit built up inside it. Then suddenly, bang, it exploded. Drippy, goopy, mucky, runny rubbish was sent splattering all over the cellar, covering Boney, Burke, and poor little Drutt. Burke struggled out from under the disgusting mess and looked around. Bits of vile pile were everywhere, running off the walls, dripping from the ceiling and all over the floor. What a load of rubbish, he exclaimed. Well, perhaps Burke will listen to Boney's advice next time. But somehow I don't think he will. Not very nice. Upstairs was getting impatient. I can't see properly without all my eyes in. Burke was balanced precariously on the huge mountain of flesh that was his master's belly, busily cleaning old flabby Gruttock's best eyeball. It was hard work. The eyeball was nearly as big as Burke. Nearly done, old fattage, he replied nervously. Oh, I hate cleaning his eyeballs. This was a job Burke didn't like at all. The eye was like a huge, slimy ball, and he was never quite sure if it could still see him while it was out of its socket. Right, I finished, said Burke, struggling to pick up the eyeball. Now, which head did I get it from? Him upstairs was getting angry as Burke fumbled around, trying to manoeuvre the eye into position. Hurry up, he shouted. Burke jumped, startled by the explosive roar. Oh, glob it, he thought, as he felt himself slipping. I'm gonna fall! And then he was gone, sliding down over the huge stomach. Thump, he hit the floor, and the eyeball slipped from his grasp, rolled out of the door, and bounced down the stairs. Oh, glob it, muttered Burke as he watched it disappear. Are you in trouble now? Down in the cellar, Boney and Drat were listening to the commotion upstairs. Oh dear, said Boney. What is Burke up to now? Drat made an excited, popping sound. The huge eyeball bounced in through the archway, hit the far wall, squashed Drutt, bounced off the oven, squashed Drutt again, bonked into Boney, and vanished down the trap door, which, as usual, Burke had left open. Oh, dear, oh, dear, moaned Boney. Burke's in trouble now. That was him upstairs, best eye. Oh, dear. Get my eye back, boomed the terrifying voice from upstairs. You stupid Burke. As him upstairs ranted on, Boney became aware of a distant rumbling coming from the trap door. Drutt jumped up and down, popping and squeaking frantically as the rumbling grew louder and louder. The whole cellar began to shake. Pots and pans fell off the table. Goodness! exclaimed Boney and fell over backwards. The rumbling grew louder still. Dust and stones fell from the ceiling and cracks appeared in the walls. Drutt scuttled off to hide under the oven. An almighty blast of hot air erupted from the trapdoor, splattering the cellar with lumps of gooey green stuff. Boney was sent hurtling into the air and landed headfirst in a pot of grilled nets gherkins. My word! he exclaimed. Oh, globbits! shouted Burke as he ran down the stairs and into the cellar. He skidded on the gooey green stuff, lost his balance, and disappeared down the trapdoor. Watch out for the gooey green stuff! shouted Boney. Too late! shouted Burke, 
as he tumbled down into the horrible blackness. Burke fell down and down into the dreadful depths beneath the trapdoor and landed with a thump in the wet, slimy mess at the bottom. Oh, oh, that hurt, he muttered as he staggered to his feet. He looked around. It was very, very dark. All around him he could hear strange noises, eerie, frightening sounds, distant grunts and roars, weird moanings and groanings. Something slippery slithered slowly over Burke's foot. Oi, get off, he shouted, shaking his foot. Oh, dear. Oi, don't like it down here. As Burke felt his way around in the dark, he began to realise that he wasn't alone. There was something next to him. Something very large, breathing slowly in and out. Burke's eyes slowly became accustomed to the darkness. Lying right next to him was a gigantic red slug. It was so big that he couldn't see where it ended. Its huge, lipless mouth quivered and dribbled. Glowing red eyes stared down at him on the ends of long antennae. Hello, said Burke nervously. I, I, I don't suppose you've seen a, a big eyeball down here anywhere? The thing said nothing. But as if in answer to Burke's question, this gigantic body began to quiver and shake. A rumbling sound seemed to begin deep within the creature. The rumbling grew louder and louder. Even the floor began to shake. Oh dear, said Burke. He don't sound too well. An almighty, explosive blast of hot air erupted from the vibrating beast, sending Burke flying off into the darkness. It was a long time before he landed, splatted with the oozy green stuff that he'd slipped on in the cellar. He's got a nasty cough there, said Burke, struggling to his feet. I wonder where I am now. He looked around in despair. Oh, globbits! How am I going to find old Wobble Gruttock's eyeball now? He'll go bananas if I've lost it. Burke was jerked from his thoughts by an eye that blinked open in the darkness. Ha! Ah, there it is, he said with relief. Then just as he was about to reach out for the eye, another opened. Then another. And another. Burke looked around. There were eyes everywhere, watching him from the darkness. They seemed to be getting closer. Oh, dear, all these eyes seem to be attached to something horrid. Burke started to run. He ran as fast as he could back towards the slug thing. He seemed to run for miles, sometimes bumping into moving things or hopping things with big teeth and running right over slimy, slithery things, squashing them flat. Burke skidded to a halt in what appeared to be a large cave. Oh, 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 dearie me, he panted. Oh, I'm lost. I'll never find my way back now. He looked around in despair. This was not a very nice-looking place. The walls of the cave were all pink and knobbly and soaking wet. Everywhere were lumps of the strange, gooey green stuff, and the floor felt soft and spongy. As Burke strained to see more clearly, he suddenly noticed an eyeball looking at him from the back of the cave. Well, I'll be, exclaimed Burke. It's old Wobbly's eyeball. He squelched his way over to it. The lost eyeball was wedged in the mouth of a tunnel of some sort. I've been looking for you everywhere, said Burke, relieved. I wonder how it got stuck in there. It's a good job him upstairs can't see where his eye is. He'd go raving rancid. Burke tried to free the eye, but it seemed well and truly stuck. He pushed and he pulled and he heaved and he tugged. He even tried kicking it and thumping it, but it wouldn't move. But something was moving. The cave was moving. And he realised it wasn't a cave at all. Great Grumfuttock's tufts! I'm inside the mouth of that giant red slug! Flabby Gruttock's eyeball was stuck in its throat, making it cough. It was about to cough again. The ominous rumbling began deep within the creature's belly. It grew louder and louder and louder. Burke turned to run, but... Too late. Oh, Globby! Burke shot upwards, blasted by an almighty gust of hot air. Up, up, and out into the cellar. He hit the ceiling with a terrific thump and fell back down to land right on top of Drat. The eyeball landed on top of them. 
and they were covered with the gooey green gunge. Ah, you found the eyeball, observed Boney, who was still stuck in the pot of grilled nets gherkins. Ah, I found the eyeball, replied Burke. He was stuck in the gob of some horrible big thing. It's just as well him upstairs didn't see where it got to. But I did see Burke, came the booming voice from upstairs. I could see everything, and I'm very, very angry. Oh, I hate eyeballs, said Burke. Boney was snoring away, sound asleep, dreaming of gallantly saving Burke from nasty trapdoor weirdies, and how brave he can be when faced with horrible, slimy, dribbly things with horrid big teeth, or giant, squirmy, green things with terrible, flashing tentacles. If Burke knew what Boney was dreaming about, he'd call him a silly old bone bounce. While Boney slept, a little green worm wriggled up to peer nervously at the trapdoor, wondering what the faint scratching sound was that seemed to be coming from below. Suddenly, the trap door slammed open. The little green worm shot off, terrified by the sudden noise. Boney spluttered, but didn't wake. <laughs> from the dark, foul-smelling depths of the trap door, something hideous began to appear. Wriggly, worm-like tendrils. A huge, bloated, grey body. A shrill whining sound echoed round the cellar. The thing emerged, slowly, deliberately, on hundreds of little wriggling legs. A giant bug with undulating red tubes sprouting from its body. The strange creature shuffled around the cellar, squirting large eggs from the squirming tubes. It laid piles of eggs all over the cellar. When all its eggs were laid, it shuffled past Boney, and back into the dark, mysterious depths of the trapdoor. Boney snored on, undisturbed. Early the next morning, Burke was just getting ready to cook a nice, juicy, globby lumps bilge blubber burger for him upstairs breakfast, when he noticed the strange piles of eggs lying all over the place. Hello! What's all this, then? said Burke, puzzled as to who or what had deposited piles of eggs all over his cellar. There was no answer from Boney, he was still snoring away in his hole in the wall. Oh, I suppose I could boil them. Or fry them even, pondered Burke, prodding the eggs and wondering if old Flabbage upstairs would rather have egg sponge instead of Globby Lump's Bill's Blubber Burger for his breakfast. But before he had a chance to make up his mind, oh, Burke jumped back in surprise as the eggs rattled, then cracked, then suddenly split open. Something green and not very nice popped up from the cracked eggs. Drutz scuttled up to watch, nervously hiding behind Burke. A green tube-like thing had popped out of the egg. It split open like a banana. From the middle, something emerged. And as Burke looked around, the other eggs were rattling, cracking, splitting and popping. They all seemed to be hatching. Oh dear, I don't like this much, moaned Burke. Got popped and rasped excitedly. He wasn't sure what to make of the eggs either. All over the cellar, green caterpillar-like things slithered out from the eggs, wriggling and crawling all over the place. Yuck! cried Burke, beginning to panic. Old Boney just snored. But there was trouble for Drutt. He found himself surrounded by the green things. Their blank eyes on long green stalks seemed to watch him threateningly. He was so frightened that he didn't even notice the juicy orange worm that would normally have made a nice, tasty snack. All he could manage was a feeble... Burke was also in trouble. Oi! Oh, this is disgusting! The horrid, slimy creatures, not content with crawling all over Burke's nice cellar, suddenly went pop 
exploding in thick, yellow, gooey mass all over poor Burke. Well, I'll be... he exclaimed. They pop! All over the cellar, the things began to pop into thick, yellow spurts of goo. They popped on the trap door. They popped over Drutt. They popped over Boney, but he didn't even notice. He just continued snoring. Pop, 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 pop. When all the creatures had popped, the whole cellar was waist deep in the slimy, yellow, gooey muck. Poor little Drutt was nearly drowning in the horrible, yucky stuff. He parked and gleeked, trying frantically to keep himself afloat. Boney still snored, even though he was almost completely submerged. Burke squelched through the yellow mess, muttering and mumbling to himself. Oh, no, look at all this mess. Oh, blubber lumps will do his nut. How am I going to clean it up? Exclaimed Drutt as he struggled to swim in the muck. Then Burke had an idea. Ah, I know. Burke plunged his hand down into the cold yellow goo and groped around for something. Ha, got it, said Burke. He'd found the handle of the trapdoor. Burke gave a mighty heave and the trapdoor opened with a thick, wet sucking sound. All the horrid yellow goo began to drain away, gurgling and slopping as it went. Drutt almost drained away with it. Hold it, Drutt, cried Burke, and just managed to snatch Drutt from the slurping, sucking mess before he disappeared forever down the trapdoor. Within moments, the stuff had completely drained away. Burke quickly closed the trapdoor before anything else popped out. Oh, he sighed. That was worse than letting the bath out upstairs. Drutt scurried about noisily, glad that it was all over. <laughs> what, what, what? muttered Boney. At last he was awake. Did I, did I miss something? Burke looked at Boney and chuckled. No, oh, no, not really, Boney. Just another normal day. Drutt laughed and made funny raspy noises. Good, said Boney, feeling refreshed after his nice long sleep. Hmm, I, I'm hungry. How about scrambled eggs for breakfast? Burke and Drutt scarpered. They'd had enough of eggs for one day. It'll be a long time before Burke will be able to make an egg sponge omelette without thinking, Yeah! Flying what's it fingy? shouted Burke angrily. He'd found an old camera while he was rummaging about in his cupboard. He was trying to take a photo of Drutt. Drutt, as usual, wasn't cooperating. As soon as Burke had lined him up in the viewfinder for a nicely composed picture, adjusted the focus, fiddled about with the various buttons and knobs, and finally checked that the flash was ready, Drutt had got bored and scuttled away. Burke was losing his temper. How am I going to take your picture if you keep running away? replied Drutt as he ran off to hide behind Boney. Boney was getting tired of the whole performance. It was giving him a headache. Perhaps he doesn't want his picture taken, Burke, old chap, he said, trying to calm Burke down and restore some peace and quiet. Well, I don't care, snapped Burke. He wasn't having any of that. I want to take a picture, right? Drutt popped. Boney said nothing. When Burke was in one of those moods, there was no point in arguing with him. Burke waddled back to his camera. He decided that he would take a photo of Boney and Drutt together. That would make a nice picture for his photograph album. Now stay still, shouted Burke, as he shifted the camera around to line up his new picture. Ah, now that looks nice, he said, peering through the camera. That's better. Burke focused the picture and made the final adjustments to the camera. Ready? Smile! Burke pressed the button. At the precise moment that Burke took the picture, the trap door slammed open, and a small green thing with wings fluttered out and popped back down again. 
There was silence for a moment. Burke was startled. What was that? Is that one of you two? And what's the trap door doing open? Boney was about to reply when flutter flutter tweet, the flying what's it thingy popped out again, flitting and flapping back and forth all around the cellar. Urgh! cried Burke, startled by the sudden movement. Burke studied the little green thing for a moment. Oh, it's a flying thing, he remarked, relieved that the creature was small and looked harmless enough. But then he remembered something, and his smile of relief changed to a worried frown. Him upstairs hates flying things. If he knows there's one down here, he'll go spare. Unfortunately, flying what's it thingies made him upstairs come out in great big purple pimples. And if that happened, Burke would have to spend the whole day popping them. He didn't fancy that one bit. Burke looked around the cellar. Where's it gone? he asked, worried that it had gone upstairs. Then Boney noticed it hanging from the rafters. Up there, Burke! Strut had seen it too, and was parping about excitedly. Oi! You! Come down! shouted Burke, trying to sound commanding. The little green creature ignored him, and began to twitter to itself. Blooming thing! Right! Now Burke was angry, and he stormed off to his cupboard to get something to knock the flying what's-it thingy off the rafters. Strut, meanwhile, had lost interest and gobbled up a passing worm. Oh dear, muttered Boney, listening to Burke's angry exclamations as he rummaged about in his cupboard. I think Burke got out of the wrong side of the bed this morning. At last, Burke found what he was looking for. Ah, this'll do, he shouted from the cupboard. Burke came out carrying a long stick. Right, said Burke determined that he was not going to spend the rest of the day seeing the him upstairs if he came out in big purple pimples. Come here, pest, he shouted, and tried to bonk the flying what's-it thingy with a stick. The thingy was too quick. It fluttered away, making tweeting sounds at Burke. Drup jumped up and down, trying to catch it as it flew across the cellar. The flying what's-it thingy settled by the archway and made mocking, chirping sounds at Burke, Drut and Boney. Get him, Drut! cried Burke, and Drut made a flying leap towards it. But the nimble little creature took flight, and Drut went head first into the wall. Now where's he got to? shouted Burke, looking frantically around the cellar. Drut regained his senses and parked and scuttled over to Boney. The flying thing had perched on Boney's head. Of course, dim witted old Bone Bonds hadn't realised that it was there. Why are you? I, I don't know, Burke, said Boney, looking around. I, I can't see him anywhere. Burke had seen it, though, and he began to charge across the cellar. Don't move, Boney, he cried. I'll get crash, click, flash, bang. Burke ran headlong into his camera, tripped, flew through the air, and landed in a tumbled heap with his camera on top of him, nearly squashing Drut. Later that day, Burke, Boney, and Drutt were looking at the photograph in Burke's photograph album. It was a bit higgledy-piggledy. Burke upside down, about to land on Drutt. The flying what's-it thingy was captured in mid-flight. Boney looked as though he was about to say something, and Drutt was looking distinctly worried about being squashed by Burke. Well, said Boney critically, it's not a bad picture, Burke, old chap. Burke was very pleased with his picture. He thought that it was quite artistic. No, he said confidently to Boney, though I do say it myself, it has a certain excellence about it. Burke studied his picture. He held it at arm's length, then looked at it closely, then from different angles. Whatever did happen to that flying thing? asked Boney. I don't know, replied Burke. Perhaps. Burke! Burke's peaceful pondering was shattered by the terrible shout from him upstairs. Get up here! There's a flying thing in my bedroom! Oh dear, oh dear, thought Burke. It looked as though he would have to spend the rest of the day purple pimple popping after all. Mm -hmm.